Hey folks, I just want to uh, talk a little bit about how I'm getting ready to uh, do a little uh, changing around, or at least experimenting on maybe changing something. So I just want to um, talk about that a little bit. You know, um, this is a finished cup, and you know, i got to get used to this camera, <laughs> how to go up or down. Um, uh, you know, usually I slip the whole pot, and then I draw the image in pencil, and then I go back and scrape away all this... Um, slip to reveal the red clay beneath and so that um, that is really not treating me well in a couple different ways. I did a video not long ago and I showed that whole process and I had a person email me and say that you know that was kind of worrisome because of the dust and everything which is totally true because I sort of like to do everything bone dry because I can create or I can you know um, I can make a whole run of pots and then I can have a couple days at the end of the making session to sit and decorate sort of get in the swing of things instead of having to make pots slip them when they're leather hard then sit down and decorate and then have to make more pots I, I sort of like to work on one thing and then the next thing and then the next thing so that's one reason why um, I work at bone dry with the deco so um, trying to get rid of the dust is something that I really want to do and one solution that I'm experimenting with right now is using uh, cold wax and I'm just going to show you I've got quite a few different things here that I just worked on today and um, so you can see here if I can get this in the right place <laughs> you can see here that I have drawn the image on the um, greenware on just the bone dry pot and then I have went through on the negative space and applied the wax. So the plan with this technique is that I will um, do this and then I'll come up with a bisque, not a bisque, but a greenware slip or an ongobe or maybe even a terra sigillata that is similar in color to the slip that I'm using right now and I can just um, use it to um, slip or tear stitch the green layer and then I'll get rid of these area that will that way I basically won't have to scrape anything and then so this this whole image of the flower would have the um, the tear stitch a lot on it or the on or whatever I'm going to come up with and then I can just come back in here and do some uh, simple scraffito for the lines and for the details which I which I do anyway and that's not producing a ton of dust like scraping away all this uh, background clay so this is one um, well this is the option that I'm working on is with this wax and doing a uh, bone dry slip or tear sigillata so I want to show you um, one thing that I've already actually fired here that I use this technique on. This was just a dummy cylinder that I made and um, you can see how I use the wax to outline the animals and then I applied this white tear sigillata and then I went back in and drew in the details and man that that looks pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. I mean it's a little bit of a different mark than using the neat, the tool to draw and then this, the carving to scrape away. I don't really necessarily care for all that carving work on the on the back of the pot, you know, back in here. I don't really care for that. I'd rather, honestly, I'd rather have the throwing rings and just sort of the, the making of the pot show. So this is actually, you know, kind of appealing to me. And, you know, it's just it's going to take some practice. I mean, that flower looks terrible, but um, but the animals, I think I did a fairly decent job on those. And so, um, and this terra sigillata is a pretty nice color, and it goes on the bone dry pot. So I'm I'm happy that um, this seems to be working, and the clay, I mean the glaze, is is doing well over top of it. So this has definitely some um, appeal and promise, and seems like it'll be a good solution. Uh oh, karma is on the move. Um, one other thing that I'm going to talk about real quick, just um, that may happen. I want to show you, let's see, I'll reach over here and grab this slab. And um, the way I worked on this was I drew the images, and this is just a practice slab. I drew the images and then I sort of slip trailed the wax around on the pencil lines. And I even also did some slip trailing here on this little border with the wax 
and I even I'm going I haven't slipped this yet or tear stitched it yet to see how I like this uh, you know like using the the slip trailer to do like details like the eyeball or the cross hatching or anything like that but that could potentially happen but I just want to show you the tool I used to uh, come up with this <clears throat> to slip trail the wax a lot of you probably have woo, one of these um, bulb syringe things that you get from your clay store and they come with a uh, it's basically a needle that you inflate like a basketball or a soccer ball with but the tip on this is pretty big and it really puts out a lot of um, a lot of wax which was too much so I've tried to think well what could I uh, do to replace that and there's some there's actually a few slip trailers on the market now that come with these really fine tips and, but they're like 20 bucks so I'm kind of a do-it-yourselfer and kind of a cheapo too so I went to um, Tractor Supply and they sell um, syringes and hypodermic needles and things for vaccinating livestock. So I picked up a pack of needles, hypodermic needles, and these are 22 gauge and they also had um, 18 gauge and some 16 gauges. The 16 gauges are definitely too big. I wasn't sure about the 18s or the 22s so I bought both. Um, the bigger the number, the um, smaller the hole in the needle. So, I'll just show you what these look like. This, um, this is sort of what they look like after I filed down the sharp point on the end. These come like really sharp, you know, so you can stick animals with them. But um, I filed that off flat. And this, I think, is the, this must be the 18. And then the 22, I've lost. But anyway, this will fit right in here just like the, the one that comes with it. And you can trail kind of a nice thin line. And so the, the 22s work just fine for a really, really thin line with this wax. That's a water-based wax, and I can water it down if I need to. But straight out of the bottle, it seemed to work. So, um, so I outlined the animals, and then I went back and, with a brush, did the thick, uh, not the thick, but, the, but the, more of the background parts. Does that make sense? So like uh, I did, I did the around the pencil marks with the uh, needle, and then I did all this right around in here with the brush, with the wax. Okay, right, easy. And the kind of wax I'm using uh, is a high water wax from High Water. This is an old bottle I have. It doesn't even have a name on it. Uh, but the wax that um, I think is in this is in this bottle is the same as in this bottle, although the it's a different color. Let's see. Left hand, right hand. I'm sure this is <laughs> entertainment value here. So this is the Forbes wax, which I think I've heard is really good. And I, I've done some tests on it. I did put this wax, this Forbes wax, on top of some slip a while back. And I don't know if it was because it was dusty or what, but it peeled off the next day, which is no good. So I've, I've went ahead and did some tests with this Forbes wax to make sure that it's going to stay on the pot for a day or two. Um, so we'll see. And you could always put some food coloring in, in your wax so it'll show up a little better on the pot. You know, you could put a little green food coloring in there and uh, you'd be able to see it a little better. All right, so anyway, that's, uh, that's sort of the plan. We'll see how it goes. I'll keep you posted. I'm going to, um, I've got an on-gobe on slip that I'm, or an on globe that I'm going to uh, try to mix up and put on these test pots and I've got some white tear gelata that I'm going to put on these and we'll just see how they work and then I'll fire them and then I'll glaze them and I'll see how they look under the glaze and I'll see if the color's right and if not I'll add a little stain and um, hopefully this will be much more healthy um, no, a lot less dust in the studio, a lot less dust that I'm breathing and um, be a nice, probably a pretty cool um, effect on the, you know, just the resist technique too. So anyway, I'll keep you posted, and I hope this was uh, sort of helpful and sort of not too weird with me trying to figure out the whole camera thing. All right, well, thanks for checking in, and um, see you next time. Okay, bye.